Okay. Um, Israel is wandering around in the desert, um, having fits of whining and complaining. But they at times they weren't complaining, huh? What's new? What's new? Yeah. Um, the, there were kingdoms in that desert, though. Uh, the Midianites, Moab, Ammon. It's such a terrible place. Why is there kingdoms here? Uh, because there was places where there were food, and uh, some scientists believe that this part of the world was actually a lot greener uh, farther back in history than it is today. Uh, so it would have produced a great deal more food, not actually maybe have even been a desert. Uh, we don't know that for sure, but some of the evidence points to a lot more rainfall and a lot more green and a lot more trees uh, back in history time. But what <coughs> the condition was, there were other kingdoms living in there. And some of these kingdoms got a little upset at, you know, 300, is it 300 million? 300,000. Three million. Three million people, right between my two numbers. Three million people walking by them. They felt insecure. Uh, they felt very threatened. Uh, and some of the countries, as Israel came to them, they sent word to the king and said, uh, let us pass through your country. We will pay you for any water we drink, or, and we won't bother you. We won't bother your people. A couple of those countries objected and said there's no way you can come through our country. And God would eventually punish those countries for that. Um, the, I believe it's the Ammonites. Either the Ammonites or the Amorites. I'm not sure if there's a... I don't remember if it's the one with the R or not. Um, they were so upset at Israel, they came out and attacked them. And Israel, with God's help, beat them. But one of the kings, a king named Balak, um, really, really wasn't happy about Israel being near his people. So he sent some of his men to a man named Balaam, who was known to be able to curse people and bless people. And if he cursed them, bad things happened. And if he blessed them, good things happened. Would, that's, usually how curses and blessings that's how curses and blessings work. And God does listen to the things that comes out of our mouths. And so he sent word to Balaam, and he said, would you, there's this group of people, these, there's, there's millions of them, and they're passing my country, and I'm afraid of them. I want you to come and curse them for me. So Beto told the guys, well, you can spend the night over there. I'm going to pray about it. He prayed about it. God told him, don't you dare. He went and he told the guys, I don't dare. And they went back to their king. So Balak sent more important officials to them, said, come curse these people. Balaam them prayed about it. God said, ah. Uh -uh. He told the guys, ah. Uh -uh. They went back. <laughs> God is consistent. He, the king sent a third set, very important, sent lots of money and told Balaam, um, come curse these people for me. And Balaam said, okay. This time he decided he'd go curse them. So Balaam went with the guys and he got on his donkey. And he was riding along on his donkey, and the donkey suddenly stopped. Well, he hit the donkey. Why are you stopping? Move, move, let's go. So the donkey started walking again, and then he hit the donkey again. And she swing, swung aside, or she stopped again. Even swung aside and crushed his foot against a, a wall he was walking, they were walking by. He beat her again. Flannel, we forgot to get out. <laughs> um, she started walking again. And then she stopped again. And he started beating her again. And she turned her, her head around to him and said, Why are you beating me? I've been your donkey for many years. I have never stopped before on the road. Why are you treating me this way? And at that point, God opened Balaam's eyes, and standing in front of him 
was an angel with a sword. And the angel told him, if your donkey hadn't have stuffed, I'd have killed you. I wouldn't have bothered her. She's, she's innocent. But I'd have killed you if she hadn't stopped. And Balaam said, okay, you want me to go back, right? <laughs> and the angel said, no. Go ahead and go to Balak. But you must say what God tells you to say or else. So he continued on. And Balak met him at the top of the mountain. And they looked down and they could see all three million Israelites down in the valley below. And Balaam made a sacrifice to God and he prayed. And the words God gave him was basically, Jacob, you're going to be prosperous and you're going to beat up everybody who comes against you. And King Balak said, what are you doing? I paid you to curse them. You just blessed them. And Balaam said, I told you I can only say what God wants me to say. That's what God wants me to say. Balak said, well, come around over here where you get a different view of them. And you can curse them from there. So he went around and he looked at the different... I think this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He looked at it from a different angle, and uh, he made a sacrifice, and he prayed, and he came back, and he said, Jacob's going to be rich, and beat up all their enemies. And ba Balak said, no, that's not right. That's not what I paid you to do. Come over here where you can only see a little bitty of them, and at least curse that part. Balaam came over, and he didn't even bother praying this time. He just started blessing Jacob blessing the, the children of Israel. Um, and Balak was very upset. And after this, he did fight Israel, and Israel did beat them up. And uh, everything that Balaam had said uh, when he was repeating what God told him, Israel prospered, Israel defeated all their enemies, including Balak. So, and of course the part that everybody remembers from the story is the donkey talking. That is the only yes. place in the Bible we have recorded of a... You messed up when the donkey starts uh, being smarter than you. You have messed up when the donkey is smarter than you. And you have messed up when God is frustrated with you enough, he lets the donkey talk to you in your language. So, yeah, don't mess up like that. <laughs> um, today is Easter. Uh, and um, though we didn't have an Easter story today for our lesson, I did want to remind everyone what my favorite Easter egg is. My favorite Easter egg, and you know, sometimes they have chocolate in them, sometimes they have candy. My favorite Easter egg has nothing because it reminds us that the tomb is empty. Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose again. So we will rise again, and we will get to be with him in heaven if we have him living in our hearts. Let's sing our song. <laughs>